I'm always on the lookout for fast and cheap external SSDs since the internal storage like the one in my M1 MacBook Air is so expensive. I found a great option. Let's check out this Acasis Thunderbolt 3 and USB 4 enclosure today. Hi, this is David of Tech for Bubba, a channel I share my experiences on how technology enhances my time with kids and family as a dad. If this is your first time here, welcome. Please consider subscribing. In today's video, I'll share how this Acasis Thunderbolt 3 USB 4 enclosure in combination with the fast M.2 NVMe drive makes a very fast external SSD. I'll show how I put the drive together very easily without any tools. And we'll see later in the video, it's much faster than the popular external USB SSDs like the Samsung T7 or SanDisk Extreme V2. Just as fast as my favorite Sabrent Extreme Q Thunderbolt 3 SSD, but a little bit cheaper. Let's see what comes in the box. There's the enclosure, of course. A couple of rubber pieces to hold the drive down. An USB Type-C to Type-C Thunderbolt 3 cable. Wow, and two thermal pads. Acas has included two thermal pads in case it takes two for the NVMe drive to make good contact with the case for heat dissipation. Very thoughtful. Lastly, a warranty card and a simple manual. Let's look at the enclosure in more detail. It's made of aluminum all the way around, so there's a good weight to it, about 129 grams. Size-wise, it's about 100 millimeters long by 60 millimeters wide and 14 millimeters thick. Here it is compared to the Samsung T7, about the same width, a little bit longer and quite a bit thicker. A better comparison is my Sabrent Rocket Extreme Q, which is also a fast Thunderbolt 3 SSD. It's about the same length and thickness, but much wider. It has a brushed silver color finish. It's quite sleek with just the Acasis logo on the top. The USB 4 Thunderbolt 3 port is on the side. There's a little indicator light next to it. On the two longer sides, there are these fins to add surface area for better heat dissipation. The grooves also make it easier to grip and hold the drive. Flipping it over, the bottom is the cover plate which we can open up to install the drive inside. There's a little text here on the side showing where to open up the bottom plate. Hmm, impressive. The bottom plate is a solid piece milled quite precisely with edges on the side and a couple of balls to snap in and hold the cover in place securely. Cool. Okay, let's put the drive together. This enclosure supports fast 40 gigabits per second max Thunderbolt 3 and USB 4 throughput and takes M or B and M key M.2 2280 form factor drives. I got this fast 2 terabyte NVMe drive with rewrite speeds up to 3400 and 3000 megabytes per second from silicon power to go with the enclosure. I like how no tools needed to put this drive together. Once the back plate is open, just insert the drive into the socket on the PCB at an angle. Push the other end down lightly and use this little plastic piece to hold it in place. There are two thermal pads included. One is thicker at one millimeter. The other is thinner at 0.5 millimeter. I try stacking both of the thermal pads together inside, but the back plate just won't close. So I'm only using the thicker one millimeter thermal pad in my case. I like to stick the thermal pad on the case instead of the drive, so I can reuse it if I decide to swap in another drive later on. All right, close the back plate and that's it. Let's see what kind of transfer speed we can get. Here I have it connected directly to my M1 MacBook Air. With Blackmagic speed test, I get just over 2000 megabytes per second write and 2600 megabytes per second read. As expected, this is much faster than what I could get with the Samsung T7, which is just about 651 megabytes per second write and 656 megabytes per second read. That's over three times faster in writes and almost four times faster in reads. 
This is about the same speed as the Sabren Extreme Q SSD that I've reviewed earlier. I'll put a link to that video here and below in the description if you're interested. One thing to know is these fast drives will eventually warm up and throttle or slow down when very large amount of data is transferred for a long time. I tried transferring a 64 gigabyte video file back and forth a few times. The drive got warm but didn't slow down the first few times. After about five times back and forth, it warmed up quite a bit and started throttling as expected. Since the case is larger than the Sabren Extreme Q, it does cool back down a little quicker. At 139 US dollars, this enclosure is not cheap. I got the two terabyte silicon power drive for $210. I'll put links to both down in the description. At about $350 altogether, I get a very fast Thunderbolt 3 USB 4 external SSD for a little bit less than the 2TB Sabren Extreme Q, which is already one of the cheapest Thunderbolt 3 SSDs out there. Since this is an enclosure, I have additional flexibility to choose different size drives depending on my budget. The enclosure supports drives all the way up to 8TB. They're still quite expensive now, but as the price comes down, I can easily swap in a higher capacity drive later down the road. Also, most Thunderbolt 3 enclosures do not support USB at the same time. This Acasis enclosure does support older USB protocols up to 10 gigabits per second. So I can use this drive to store and transfer files between my USB devices as well. By the way, I still think Sabren Extreme Q is a good option for those who want a Thunderbolt 3 SSD already put together ready to go out of the box. If you have an M1 Mac or another device that has a Thunderbolt 3 port like the new M1 iPad Pro or one of the newer Windows laptop, I'd highly recommend checking this enclosure out if you want one of the fastest external SSDs and don't mind tinkering a little bit, just a little bit really, to put the drive together. This is a perfect companion to my M1 MacBook Air for all my family photos and videos. Thanks for watching. If you find this video helpful, please help me out by liking and sharing the video. What external SSDs have you tried? Have you found one even better? I'd love to know which is your favorite in the comments below. If you want to see more videos on how technology can enhance our life with kids and family, please subscribe and turn on the bell to be notified when I put out my next video. I'll see you in the next one. Until then, cherish each moment.